Hi everyone, I'm Raksha Jain, the Mercury SR with the 5G Aura project, uh, a part of the Horizon 2020 program in the European Union and also a PhD student with the Wireless Network Group at Polytechnic University of Catalonia in Barcelona, Spain. Uh, today I'm going to present our work which is called Mobility Management as a Service in 5G Networks uh, alongside my co-authors Elena Lopez and Ilka Demerpal. Um, so, uh, we look at the agenda and so first and foremost it's the motivation and the aim uh, through the motivation and aim we aim to you know uh, present like why we are performing this study uh, the next we perform we present some baseline studies uh, before we're you know proposing the concept the studies that we did and we're going to present those and then we are going to move on to the on-demand mobility management aspect, which is the mobility management as a service, uh, which we perceive will be very critical uh, in 5G networks. And hence, we propose this concept here. Next, uh, we go on and uh, we propose the granularity of service. Granularity of service is going to be extremely <clears throat> critical as we go forwards. Uh, it's going to be... Um, an important component of mobility management given the amount of heterogeneity and uh, in applications and mobility profiles we'll discuss this later and next we present the challenges and then the conclusions so motivation and aim motivation and aim uh, basically we look at this uh, current network architecture in the current network architecture we you know you can see the cellular core is different from the wlan core and they access the internet uh, you know individually and so yeah it's not a exact representation but this is more so a top level view and so the domains are separated mobility management mechanisms are designed to handle these scenarios but there is no way of performing a seamless handover because you know as a switch you can very well in daily life you can see that when you switch from wi-fi to cellular there's a break in connection you need to restart there's a restart in connection and then you know you can start processing you can start seeing or uh, working with whatever you, you were doing before so um but the 5g core is going to have everything together and uh, this is where the challenge comes but we'll discuss that it's envisioned 5g scenario it's again a top level view uh it's dense both in terms of the access point and the number of users and it's heterogeneous so it's wi-fi 5g 4g lt umts 2g and there is going to be software i score and access so a whole different ball game uh and uh, it's uh, different it's um, more heterogeneous and dense so these are different aspects so another part of the motivation and aim is to look at that the number of subscriptions is going up from 2014 to from 7,000 10.1 billion to 9 billion users as well as the demand in data traffic is also going up from is going to grow by 12 times in smartphone and overall 10 times so that's a big number taken from the direction mobility report so in addition to the heterogeneity density you also have increased the number of subscriptions and uh, that you have to deal with so increased user density estimated 10 times for imt 2020 for overall traffic uh, for overall user growth increased network heterogeneity which we have already seen exponential growth of traffic and then there's going to be support for multiple network verticals and mobility profiles uh, by network verticals i mean iot um, critical services broadband and then there's you know you need optimal strategies to deal with these uh, sorts of uh, transformations in the network and hence a new perspective is necessary so we do some baseline studies and these are some of the mobility management approaches that we have so ietf and ieee proposed you know 802.21 v4 v6 these are all very popular strategies ieee 802.21 is in particular very important because it presents an inter rat handover but only for ieee 802.x technologies uh, but it's an information service and information control service so basically you can also try and integrate it with the 3gpp technologies in a way that you can perform interact between cellular and wi-fi and i and 802 networks <clears throat> they can be user and network centric decision making so the either the user can be taking decisions or the network or both can combine 
then there are rack selection algorithms out there for optimization based fuzzy logic generic algorithm and then there are policies uh, policy based handover decision schemes as well as handover mobility management involving sdn and nfv um SDN and NFV, we should mention here that it's very critical given that the amount of importance to softwareization that's coming up. And uh, so they're going to be the most important enablers for 5G networks. And then adaptive mobility management. So 5G Norma here actually presents an adaptive mobility management scheme with, uh, you know, the ability to change your scheme through a feedback loop. So that's again very important in the context of the research that we are doing. So to present the on-demand mobility management, um, uh, the mobility management as a service, which is the acronym we have presented here, MMAAS, MMAS, um, we, I would like to explain it through a restaurant menu conundrum. So you have the a la carte and la table de haut and uh, it's a French word, so excuse me for my pronunciation if it's, if it's not correct. Um, and so a la carte is basically, you can choose on demand. And la table is a bit more like a fixed menu. So when you have a fixed menu, you can't, you don't have flexibility and you can't scale it because if you're not that hungry, you can't eat it. Or if you're too hungry, you can't eat more because it's a fixed menu. And, and you don't have much choice. So it's kind of like one size fits all approach, which isn't true uh, with 5G networks, which we, uh, we will have. But with a la carte, you have a choice. So either you can f do a one size fits all, or you can just you know chop and change based on like uh, individual user or network context. So motivating it through that, we look at this example scenario where you have an STN controller, a not bound and south bound interface with these open flow switches, the access networks and access points. So what really happens is there is an inquiry for parameters and the parameter values are returned to the SDN controller, which then sends it to the north through the not bound interface through here to the application software and then if it thinks that a handover is required then it sends a mobility management solution to the sdnc which then implements it as open flow rules or if it's an access network based scheme like a traffic transfer or a change in networks then a resource allocation rules as well so access network parameters might be signal to noise ratio uh, receive signal strength indicator um, of other and current access points at the mobile node types of flows on the mobile node and mobile node policies and the core network parameters would be like network load link failure congestion information latency or uh, links so as you can see these parameter values are returned you get the you process and you then have a handover required and then the mobility management solution that's formulated here is sent to the SDNC and then you do the open flow rules or the resource allocation rules depending on like what kind of mobility management solution is there. so it's an on-demand service um, and the computational and network resources are assigned based on the requirements it utilizes the multiple pieces of information that are available within the network so it's an optimal solution basically you're getting gathering all these parameters and you're generating a solution and next, it can be both centralized and distributed. So you can have a centralized SDN controller, or you can really distribute this mechanism throughout the network. And uh, you know, you can avoid single points of failures, uh, or you can in improve your scalability. And the logical flow of information is well established from like information inquiry, reception, processing, and mobility management rules. So the next aspect we are looking at is granularity of service, which is really important because you look at it, you look at there is a delay sensitive flow, a delay uh, tolerant flow. And uh, so what you do is as the mobile node moves from access router one to the access router two, the delay tolerant flow undergoes a path switch um, because it can tolerate that amount of delay where you have a change in IP address and path. Whereas the delay sensitive flow is forwarded from the access router one to two. And so it's really important because you really don't want to lose connectivity and quality of service as you move along. 
and you can and when there is a new flow it really just starts from the current access router it's attached to instead of going to through access router one so such granularity in service supports flexibility and scalability which allows for optimized network resource allocation based on flow types or you know network resources available allows for optimization for users by adhering to their network context so as we just saw you know the network context and the user context is important and yeah it's context based decision and it can be at the most granular level such as so basically there are four ways you can do granularity of service uh, mobility profile so it depends on like uh, this would depend on like what kind of mobility profile you have then the flow is delay sensitive or delay tolerant we just saw predefined policies the user may decide it does not want to attach to a particular sort of network or it wants a particular type of quality of service so those are predefined policies even networks have their own policies like uh, regarding congestion and the network load so if the network starts to get loaded at one point they might try and offload it or to transfer the traffic to another access point or um, connection or a radio access technology so based on that you can implement granularity of service um, so the challenges would be uh, computational resource management so to be able to manage all the computational resources available in the network will be important the computational complexity of the algorithm will be really important then control plane latency because you need to do uh, a particular amount of signaling to really you know <clears throat> implement these rules so control plane latency will be important and network slicing support so the future networks are they are going to have a lot of uh, different services like iot massive machine type communications extreme broadband services so to service all of them together uh, that sort of support and mobility management strategies is also important and so to conclude a new perspective to mobility management is imperative research efforts are being made however they do not provide a holistic uh, solution so that's why we're looking at new solutions here uh, MMAS, it's a software as approach and it provides it and with the global view it is capable of generating optimal solutions uh, it can be an important 5g enabler because uh, through optimized solutions you can reduce the frequent handover problems or the ping pong effects or even just improve quality of service by way of like you know ensuring the networks don't get congested while handovers take place and granularity of service will be critical to providing the flexibility and scalability and uh, the challenges such as uh, the ones we mentioned computational complexity uh, latency etc they need to be adhered to thank you and uh, that i hope that uh, that provided you some insights into mobility management as a service for any questions you can uh, contact us thank you uh,